How do you do all? Large modelling bench. No, it's not. God, oh, good, good. Mix up. It's Nigel's modelling bench. Nigel, if you've nice to have you on board, mate. Welcome to this crazy world of mine. Um, right, okay. What we're doing is, uh, oh, for those of you who don't know it, just in case I have got any members, but it's probably a bit old out now. But um, Nigel's modelling bench. He's a lovely bloke. Um, I've helped him out um, a couple of times with some things with a uh, namely the impossible kit um that nasty tragic uh god what was it that vc10 the big and the 172 job it is a horrible kit i've still got mine i know nigel put his in the bin but um i've still got mine but nigel's uh nigel's modeling bench um yeah he's a great bloke and uh he's very funny I like him because uh, he makes me laugh. And the dog Jess, she's a character as well. So if you haven't heard of him, go and have a look at him. He's a uh, Nigel's modelling bench. At the moment, he's doing the Boulder 132 um, Lancaster, which I must admit, <coughs> if I did have the money, and I'd love to have get my hands on one to see what I could do with it, but um, that's another story. So, um, yeah, there's a little shout-out for you. Hello, Nigel. And again, welcome on board, mate. Um, right, <clears throat> so moving on. Here we are now. This is Revel's Mark 9C41 type U-boat. Um, this is the, um, here, here we go again, parts of boats. Uh, this is the conning tower, so I've got it all glued together. There was no point in me showing you how to glue this thing together because we all stick things together in our own little way. And I don't want to turn around and say to anybody how to suck eggs. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and see if we can paint this now. It's got a black undercoat on. Um, the unfortunate thing with this tower is it does go a funny um, grey-black colour. So this was the, uh, the the primer coat as such. So basically, I'm just going to go over it and um, give it a give it a coat of um, some black that I've mixed up. And then, if I can, and I really haven't got a clue how I'm going to do it because the things. Um, and what was it? What was it? What's my answer to um, James? All the way, hello, James. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, I said to James this morning, I think it was 1,602 uh, millimeters long, so it's um, quite a big bugger. And to try and fit it in this small space, this is this is literally all I've got to work with here, um, for the time being in my uh, lovely temporary accommodation. Um, then yeah, that's um, that's literally all I've got. To, where is it now? There it is. Then um, yeah, that's literally all I've got to work with is this here. So without further ado, um, this is the stuff that I've mixed up in here. I managed to get it on my hands up, or hand. So um, this is basically uh, oh god, here we go. Look, it's the thing I hate about these things: the lids come loose on the inside, and then you've got to really grip it. And, and then, well, and then you just hope it comes off like that. Right, so this is, um, this is Mr. Surfer Primer mixed with a, a bit of grey. So, uh, where's me light? I don't what I bloody hell I'm doing here. So, um, yeah, here we go. So it's not quite black. It's got an element of grey in it. I use this colour level of don't take too much notice of 400. It's just Mr. Colour Leveller, thinner. Leveling thinner. The 400 just means it comes in a, a 400ml jar. There. Net 400ml. So that's what that's what that means. You can get a 250, I think, or 300, which is a smaller bottle, about that sort of size. But I always get it in there. And that, I'm going to give another shout out now, comes from um, a guy called Peter, Oxted Model Centre. Uh, you can look him up online, preferably look him up on Facebook. Um, he does, uh, he sponsors our club. So, um, yep, if you uh, give him a shout, Oxted Model Centre. I haven't got any of my cards, he did give me a load of cards, but when I moved out of my, what once was my 18-year housing into um, into this place, um, all the cards and that got put away everywhere, so I literally have just got the bare essentials here. Um, enough to make a model and finish it. So, um, yeah, the Oxted Model Centre. 
um, look him up. His name's Pete. He's a good guy. He's a member of our club as well. And um, he'll get you all your needs. He gets all the paints, the glues, and stuff like that. Um, and no doubt, if you give me a mention, you'll get your, you'll get 10% off. He's normally cross board, he gives 10% on everything. So, yeah, and if you're into war gaming, um, and there's all this Warhammer um, little figurines, and oh, it's, um, because part of our club is a war gaming club as well. Um, he does lots of lots of stuff for that. He gets all the Warhammer stuff. He gets some um, stuff that's hard to get hold of as well. So, um, yeah, another shout out there. So that's Pete and Nigel's Modelling Bench. woo Thank you very much, guys. Right, OK, let's get on with this. Otherwise, I'll never get it bloody done. I've got a tornado bursting through here now. It's windows open, which ain't a bad thing. Right, so let's get you back down to number one. Um, and we're going to do this. I don't know, but here we go. Right, so <coughs> let's just have a little. Yep, that's working. So we'll go with the. Um, oh God, I was going to say PO. You can tell I'm an aircraft man, not a boat man. These aren't PO tubes. Um, these are periscopes, and I do believe that one, if not two, of them are aerials, but. That's the periscope there. I think these are two of some sort of variable. So we painted in black. Uh, right, and then we'll start from the back here. So we'll go up there, up the flagpole. And then just go across like this. Spray the whole thing black. Get as much coat as we can. Because the decking on this actual submarine um, isn't black. Um, it's kind of like a very dark grey so more than likely probably be using dark sea grey now as far as I'm aware the whole point of doing me doing these this video with his submarine is due to the fact that there was a guy called John um, you know who you are He's in America. Um, again, he's another modeler. Um, he does uh, normally do aircraft, but I take it from the conversation I've had with him, he's recently um, turned to U-boats. And he saw my first U-boat that I'd done some time ago. And to which case I yes, I have still got that one. And um, it's, it's just in, a garage at the moment um, it had a bit of an accident so it's got to be repaired um, it can be repaired and so um, it was him that said to me can you do a tutorial on how you weather um, your um, your u-boats so I thought right okay yep yeah, I certainly will do so with that I went out and bought another one which was this one a Mark 9 and, um, and so here we are so that's a uh, that's the that's it. So that that now will dry, and that will stay as is. I don't need to um, touch it anymore. These things they do pull out. Um, there is another area that goes in there. I don't know where it is. Anyway, um, so that's the conning tower for the most. We'll just leave him alone and let him dry. Then uh, what we've got to do then is we've got to somehow. Oh God, now I'm going to do this. Uh, so we pick, a dark, extra dark sea grey, not so much that one, what about this one, oh no, it's a brand new one, no, it will be this one then, um, and then we just basically add some black to it, yeah add some black to it because I'm going to knack this paint anyway because uh, this will be used for the majority of that submarine. So give it a shake. God, blimey. Let's have a look, see what's happened with it. Darker, it's still not the dark I'd like, so I took the whole pot in there. I'm going to do that up, put the black lid back on, and then. 
shake. Right, and this is now to do the bottom of the boat. <coughs> Right, how do? Right, so here we go, the bit I dread. So the, it's all been done in uh, black primer. Uh, let's see if I can get a bit more of her in. She's such a big thing. So basically what we've got to do, is we're going to coat all of this now in that gray, that black gray. Um, back in there, just give it a bit of a shake up. And then what you do then is, is, is I'm already thinking of how to weather it, but we won't, we won't go there yet, because we just want to get the basic colors on. So, here we go. So, um, I'm going to do this now. Right, okay, let's, um, Give it a go. So, we'll just make a, a fairly half decent coat of paint on here. This is probably not going to be the best, but. Right, so that's that bit. So now, geez, have to move it a bit further back, and now we'll go along here, under there. Now, I've glued the stand on. You don't have to glue the stand on, but for me here, where I'm working, it was easier for me to glue the stand on. And for once. It's quite quiet in the background. Um, they are all in, barring one of them. My eldest is on a school camp, so she's normally the one that's uh, stirring things up the worst when she's here. A little monkey, but there we go. I'll have to do a, a, a video with her as well, because um, Anyway, I'll go, I'll go into it at the end if I remember. Right, now we're getting to the impossible now. It's getting so long that... Uh... Now... Uh, I'm going to do this. I'll take that out of the way. Put this out here a minute. And then put that over. Right. And then what I could do is that's the only other thing is I've managed to flat one of the rudders off. Oh, right. Typical. I have no fear. Bit of glue, this stuff dries pretty quick. Right, here we go.
Typical. Just when you're trying to get things sorted without rushing too much. And I'm going to just put a bit of fast drying glue on it. That should do her. Now, we've just got to come down the back here and uh, somehow I'm going to do this. Everything I have weighs a ton. Right, before I show you now, so we'll get it so. So now. Yeah. It's not exactly easy with something that's bigger than if I had me proper falling about, you know what I mean? I'm impressed if I put those out of the way. Put them on my cabinet here and on the side. Just too much faffing. Right, there we go. So here we go. And we go along here. By the way, I'm using an Ongawata Neo with a 0.3 millimetre needle in it. <clears throat> so it's not the, <coughs> I wouldn't say it was the best thing to use, but it's just what I've got to hand. Um, normally something of this size, I would use a Grex with a um, with a 0.5 needle in it so I can get a larger spread. Or I've got another airbrush as well, I um, can't think of what it's called, um, which I've hardly used, but that too has got a 0.5 in it. Um, yeah, I can't think what it is. But uh, anyway, this is what I'm using at the moment. Is this, and that is a. What did I say? It was a point two or point three needle, point three, I think it is. And uh, yep, yeah. so I'm upside down with a. And then on the bottom. So you will use, um, let's just get in there with me. And. So don't forget this is only, um, the, the base coat, the weathering comes afterwards. Which 
So what we're doing at the moment is spraying her up to get her ready for a for a weathering coat. Well, get her finished first and then do the weathering afterwards. And as long and laborious as this is. I don't know how to edit videos. I don't know, maybe I should read up on this stuff. Um, but uh, being autistic, uh, I tend to be quicker shown rather than read. But that's me. So we're already 20 minutes into it. Enough. And although she's upside down, they seem to be covering it quite well. turn it over and uh, <coughs> do the top of the blades up a bit, knocking my books over, and then we're going to do the front end, whoops, that's it, so we just do the front end, See what I'm doing. Got the flimsy old stand, but That's 
side. And then we'll turn around. Give the other side a bit of a quick squirt she's, she's a bit bald on this side, but not very bald. Well. find that um, your paint's just starting to go a bit globally in the in the cup. Just always keep a pipette full of um, leveler thinner and you can just swash it in and then it comes back out, give it a bit of a back bubble and off you go again sort of thing. Right, so that's that. Now, what I've got to do now is I've got to put a lighter grey on. So, I can keep the same thing as that. So, I'm yep. So, I think I've already mixed this up. God, I mean, these are handy little tools. Look. Got a little blue rubber cup, put that in there. Put that one there. Spanner, and it unclicks and undoes and breaks the paint seal on the paint. So, what we got in here? Yeah, looks alright, still watery. So, what you can do, we ain't got much of this to do. So, we'll. Uh, Go along the top of this. Like this, right? So, uh, try and see what I'm doing here. Yeah, don't have to worry about this being oversprayed onto the lower part of the grey because what we're going to do is just get the two colours on because this colour's got to be camouflaged. So just shove her that way a bit. So we can get the back end in. Turn that away. And then oh, move along again with broken chair. I'm not worried at the moment about if I mess anything up, I overspray anything. Because the whole idea is I just want to get this on there. Like that. Right? So that's what we're looking at. Is to get the whole thing looking like that. Right? So I'm going to do the other side. And uh, hang on, I'll just move you up and out of the way there for a minute. And then I'll do the other side. And again, like I say, I'm not too overly bothered. The only thing I don't like is they give you some cotton to do the rigging with. And as much as it's alright, it's um it tends to doesn't look that great. Oh, maybe I should have done that, but never mind, like I say. We're not too worried about this. Yeah. 
many in the pot. So I can, I'm going to get it on two. I mean, I'm going to make this one. I'm going to do this boat like she's still going to sea. So she will have some weathering on her, but it won't be as um, uh, grand as uh, the last one, which looked like she'd been sat in the docks for years, forgotten, and basically left to rot. And that was the look I wanted, and that was the kind of look I got for it. But, um, Right, um, see if I can. So let's see if I can do the front end. I just got to do the. Is this just go around doing this patchwork and wasting the rest of it? There we go. Right, that's that colour done. I mean, a lot left in that bowl, so chuck it in the bin. Right now, the camouflage. So, what we've got here is again just um, I'm just using uh, what is it, X, XF77, which is a, a Japanese dark grey, but. A lot of the times my colours get mixed up and mixed up. And... But uh, yeah, she looks all right. She's good enough for this anyway. Oh, and a bit of... Right, so. Uh... Right, in the end out. Right, now then. Just got a quick open up here. This, this airbrush gets used so much that um, the nozzle is now worn, and uh, my good mate has got me a new nozzle for it. So, without further ado, um, all we on the front end here. So, just after this, there's a bit of camouflage, and it got. Right, um, let me see if I can. Right, so here we go. So, as you can see, that's what we're following, this here. So we're gonna do that, that bit of camouflage there. So, um, there we go. The rig up, the rig up. Right, so here we go, so it's there, so it comes from kind of up here somewhere. So that's the first bit, and the middle bit is right when we just touch it up a bit there. So the middle bit is where the tower is. Put these last two struts here. Now 
Now you see now this is where, so you've now done uh, your light grey, your camouflage grey, right? But you've also given that a coat of dark grey, but that's not the finished coat because that, um, believe it or not, uh, will come into play in a minute when, um, let me just clean this off, bloody stuff. Because obviously when you get your, your German grey, then um, that's the colour that's going to be. So, then let's just put that back. Right. Beautiful. Right, and then the last bit is the dark grey right up the very back. Um, and just past the exhaust. So if we get that there, and then I think if we try and maneuver via bolt down to here, so as you can see, there's the exhaust. What looks like exhaust. So again, and then we go from there. So that's that, right. So that's now that side complete with the grey there, the grey there, and the grey up the front. So what I'll do is I'll just position you here and then I'll quickly do the other side. And I think the other side is exactly the bloody same. Exactly the same. So I'll just go on with that. And quickly do it. So we just make sure that it comes from up here. That one again. Uh, and then again with the back, the back is. Camouflage, and then what we do then is put her back on her feet and then just go around and again just pebble dodge the end of that pot. put his lid on take these away and then uh, just give it a quick squirt on light grey to go on with this.
we're just lighten that grey up that's in in that pot. I'm just gonna lighten it with a bit of this 306, which is Gunsy Grey. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there. And then what we'll do then, put a bit of about four drops of leveller. And then we just get a brush. Any old brush. Then we just mix it in. This time rather than the whole idea is I'm gonna try and clean this out now. Now Now then, so still a little bit thick. Number ten drops. Mix it up again. Get that brush in there. It's swirling around. Breathe it out. Brush off a bit. Well, that is. We should mix it. And then just model it on. So at the moment it just doesn't really make sense but eventually it will. So you've got this, so you've got this whole mottled effect on the top now. And then I think where um, it shows you on the paint plans, this whole thing goes completely and utterly gray. The whole tire lot is like this black gray. <coughs> um, but when you spray it lightly on, some of this might show through, you know, or show, hopefully you hope it will show through anyway. Because what you do is you put a very, very thin coat of this stuff on. Now what else you can do is, is you can do this. So this could be part of the weathering process just on the upper camouflage alone. So uh, what you would do is you would come in here like this and you could go either on the rivets. I can't tell whether I'm getting on there or not. I'll move that out of the way. It's too much of a bright light, really. So it's like in between the panels. Or so, hmm. Yeah, you don't really show up. Bugger. Uh, hang on, let's add a... Uh... Let's add a, go a bit harsh, add a bit of white to it.
So there's that one wet. Right, that's what I'm adding to it. To kind of brighten it up a bit, to line it up a bit. A few more drops of, uh, what do you call it? Leveler. And this should liven the whole process up. Wipe the brush off again. Right. So here we go. So we'll we'll go back on top again because obviously uh, uh, let's move that out and then we'll go back up on top. Like you know, do a bit more white here and there. again and then again in between the panels and again you can go down Obviously, where the where the sun's going to catch the UV light is on the top. Because obviously, this is pretty much under water most of the time. So all of this is this will get weathered and faded. Um, in my mind's eye, whether it does in real life, I don't know. But. It's what it is. So you can already start to see. Right, as to how that's appearing now. And again, do it. I'll just do this side. I'll do. I'll, I'll do this side. So I've, I've shown you how to put this colour on, the base colours on. Do the basic camouflage, model the top, and then we're just doing some basic weathering with the airbrush now, which is just to model the side a bit. If you, if, well, as, as well as if you go uh, nearer, you'll get a, a more, you know, prominent spot like that. So if I go near it goes it goes whiter. Yeah, so you can you can do like like round the portholes there or whatever the hell they are, I don't know they're portholes or what they are, but But if you wanted to do say like um uh like there, where there'd been some repairs on the rivets, you could go closer and just spray it like that and then you've got a nice line as to you know, as to like some some work on the door here for instance. And then some of them, you know, replace that door lid or something like that. Yeah, anything like that. It's <clears throat> it's just using the imagination. I mean, you know, yeah, things weather, and yeah, they do weather. And but it's it's a case of how it weathers. Nothing weathers the same. So don't let anybody turn around and say, to you, "Oh, you done that wrong. You won't weather like that." Because weathering is different on everything. 
um, aeroplanes, you know, you could have a lineup of 10 Boeing 737s and all 10 will be weathered differently. They won't, they won't all be the same. So that there is no, uh, you know, um, if, what's, why, buts, do's and don'ts. It's just what you're aiming to do is you're aiming to get it as realistic as you can and then and, and go from there. And I won't say it's easy, because it bloody well ain't. And it's time, it's time consuming more than anything. I mean, look, I say, my mix is getting a bit, so I'll just tip a bit in there, actually. Matter of fact, a little bit of tissue. Give it a bit of a blowback to mix it up. And it's, uh, Clean the end out with a bud. Right, see what we've got now. So as you can see down, that's how that's starting to look. Now when you go over the top of this, with like your light, your light washes and stuff, it should look, start to look pretty good. So and I'll just move her along a bit. that where say for instance you wanted to do a bit of rust you could you could light light coat this so you might want to not do every one but every other one or you know get, get something like that looking up there or I mean the rust the bit of piece I don't know what they are. I'm assuming that there's some sort of um, footstep, but I don't know. They might not be. That's it. Christ is nearly an hour long video, yeah? Again, we can go on the top with a few things. Again, you can go right close. If you go close, you know, you get this swirly whirly pattern in, and that you can do, modelers do.
So there you go. So then you can see that you're just you're just mottling the whole lot. And then remove that up a bit. And uh, just do this back bit. Right, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stop it there because uh, this is the part that really takes the, the longest amount of time. Um, so I need to get two sides done. <clears throat> so I've shown you how to do one side and I've shown you how to get the, the mottling on the top um, with just a simple airbrush that I uh, was a Neo. It's good airbrush, don't get me wrong. Um, and, uh, and and so there we have it. So that's, that's the start of it. There she is in all her glory. So uh, yeah, you got the top done, the front and the sides. This is all what we'll, and then what we we'll do is I'll get the other side done and then when I've done that, I'll then come back and uh, we'll go through how to, you know, rust certain things using, you know, different modelling products, paints as well as um, the uh, the Tamiya uh, weathering powders or makeups, as uh, you, uh, I've sometimes heard them called. But for now, that's it. That's how it's just going to stay for a minute. And I'm going to do the other side off camera get her all up to scratch and then get ready for the next thing so we've camouflaged her put her basic colors on this is the start of the weathering process and then basically what you can do from now on in because she's a working ship she goes to sea she comes back to port she goes back out again then they um they repair her you know do certain bits and that's hopefully what we're going to end up looking like is a thing that's gone going to war um and uh yeah, she's on her way back because she spent all her torpedoes because all the hatches are open. I know, they'd, they'd probably be shut on the real thing, but I, I decided to do a moment just to make it a little bit interesting. And, um, and yeah, and we'll go from there. So, without further ado, thanks very much. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. So, bye for now. Tidy byes. Stay safe. Behave yourselves. Woo!